My name is Nathan Retta. I am an Android engineer by trade. I work for DoorDash on their Dasher app. Um, I have worked a lot with uh, Swift UI, uh, Jetpack Compose, and also Flutter, so I'm big on uh, mobile frameworks. Um, in this talk, I'll try to display some of the strengths of Flutter and some of the good use cases for it, as well as kind of how to actually get into Flutter. And we'll, we'll be able to um, show, I'll, I'll show a sample app with both iOS and Android. Um, it's a very simple app, but you can kind of see how things are working. Um, so what is Flutter? At a high level, it's a UI software development kit. Um, it's used to create beautiful and performant user experiences across an array of devices, Android, iOS, web, desktops, apps, and even embedded devices with Google's Fuchsia operating system. Um, applications that are written with Flutter use the Dart programming language, which is a fairly uncommon language. Um, actually was built originally as it was sold as a JavaScript replacement um, by some internal engineers at Google who were very interested in not having to deal with JavaScript in their code stack, in their stacks. Um, prior to Flutter's existence, it was used to power a Dartium browser, which was like a Chromium browser, but written in Dart. Um, but that really, really tanked and nobody used it. Um, so it kind of it lay dormant until uh, the Flutter project became a big deal. And now um, we're, we're seeing Dart used a whole lot with Flutter apps. Uh, Dart is an object-oriented language, statically typed, um, whereas JavaScript, of course, is um, dynamically typed. And this is prior to TypeScript being um, uh, a, a coming into play as a strict superset of JavaScript. Um, Nowadays, uh, TypeScript is a very good option with React Native Framework, uh, but we'll, we won't really be covering that in this talk. Uh, so yeah, why would you want to use Flutter? So for traditional mobile applications, the way we develop them natively, so we actually create two native applications written with two completely different stacks. Um, for iOS, the Options are you have um, at the view layer, you have Swift UI and you have UI kit with storyboards or without storyboards. And those are the view frameworks that you're given out of the box in order to create iOS applications. Uh, Swift UI is a declarative framework. Um, it's, it's new. It's still not the norm as far as iOS development goes, but it's, it's gaining popularity. Um, on the Android side, Jetpack Compose is the very last one to the party as far as declarative frameworks go, um, but it's very nice. It's written in Kotlin. Um, the legacy Android code that you'll see out there or the vast majority of code that's in existence has been written with XML and with fragments and activities, which are Android uh, UI elements. And then of course, if you're wanting to write native apps, you will need to get familiar with Android Studio and Xcode because those are the two different development environments that you'll be working in. And of course, two different languages, two different sets of views. Um, and the only uh, shared code that you will find will actually be once you finally exit the uh, mobile stack and start to hit the backend APIs. This is all assuming a domain-driven design uh, environment. Uh, so how does that differ from Flutter? In Flutter, you build, you build one, you're writing one single code base in Dart. You actually have different IDE options. You can use Android Studio. You can, you can also use VS Code and other text editors. Um, in Flutter, everything is a widget in the UI. So you'll notice on this slide, on iOS, you have you know, Swift UI, UI kit and storyboards, many different views. On Android, you have Jetpack Compose, XML and Fragments. Well, in Flutter, it's a little bit more simple. Everything is a widget. And by everything, it, when I say everything is a widget, it's not just the UI elements, but it's even the um, networking stack, Stream Builder and async, the Dart concept for async await, um, completable futures are also actually widgets. 
Um, so in Dart, uh, in Flutter, uh, everything is widget. One thing that I really do like about Swift UI and Jetpack Compose is that they actually support reactive programming out of the box. Um, these new frameworks have learned a little bit from uh, React Native as well as Flutter and its support for uh, reactive programming, which is very desirable for uh, UI development with mobile apps. OK. This is a bit of uh, declarative UI in practice. Um, on the left side, you can see uh, the Flutter version of declarative UI. In the center, we have the Jetpack Compose version. And on the right, we have Swift UI. Notice these are very similar. Um, in each case, the parent view element, this is a tree structure for the view elements, is a horizontal modifier, a row. It's actually written as a row in both Flutter and in Jetpack Compose, but in Swift UI, it's called horizontal stack, H stack. But they're doing the same thing. It's just that we have a row item. And in this case, if you look at the bottom of the slide, we're actually trying to render out um, an image of Sindar, uh, CEO of Alphabet parent company of Google, and then some text with his name and then the text below his name being his job title um, with, these, with these views. Um, so the parent being the row or horizontal stack, um, directly underneath those, you actually have similar naming for the images. In both Compose and Swift UI, we actually use image, whereas it's actually a specific widget called circle avatar in Flutter. And then underneath those, we have the vertical, the vertical stack or the, the, the scrolling column uh, modifier. So it's actually shown in Flutter and Jetpack Compose as a column, whereas in Swift UI, it's um, a vertical stack, a V stack. So once you start to learn one of these frameworks, it's actually very easy to start to move between them with Jetpack Compose, with Swift UI, and with Flutter. Um, if you want to look at some of this, this is um, there's a link down below with an article where it shows these three specific um, view elements that you that were used to create that view of Sindar. Um, Flutter is different in that it renders it renders very differently. With Flutter, you have control over every pixel on the screen. With iOS and with Android, you're actually using native view elements to draw um, to draw, let's say, uh, a text view or some sort of image. And that's actually going through the operating system in the standard manner, which is in the case of an Android application, it's a JVM app. Um, Swift C compiles down using the Swift C compiler um, and then down into machine code. But with Flutter, you're actually drawing directly on the canvas. And the code that you write is actually compiled down straight to a binary and executed. And you have control over every pixel on the screen. So with frameworks like React Native, where you actually write React UI elements, and then they map to individual uh, like specific views within Android and iOS. Um, let's say a text view in Android is just native Android text view, a uh, view for rendering text. Um, and then there's a similar uh, view with iOS. And with React Native, it actually maps down to those native views. And so you're actually developing two native apps. Flutter bypasses all of that and draws directly on the canvas. So this is fundamentally different in the way in which it renders uh, to the screen, which is very powerful. It gives you the ability to do animations, um, to do a lot of different things. And you've started to abstract away the um, operating system that you're on, because instead of using the native views, you're actually using the Skia two-dimensional graphics library um, and then abstracting away um, OpenGL and metal frameworks that are used under the hood for iOS and Android, and you're just drawing directly on the canvas. And so Flutter users don't have to care as much about what screen they're rendering on, which is really, really freeing, and then also allows you to um, use the GPU to do really, really beautiful animations. 
Unfortunately, in this talk, I haven't done any of those beautiful animations. We're doing a very basic app. Um, so I'll go ahead and see if I can exit this um, uh, presentation mode. And I'll show you, let's see, which, which screen am I sharing here? Are you seeing uh, um, uh, two IDEs or? We're seeing your slides. No, yeah, I we see the still see your slides. Specifically, like the, the zoomed out, like you're no longer in the presentation form of the slides. Let's do desktop one. Okay. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So um, the application that we're going to be running is, it's very basic. And I'll actually drag an iPhone onto the screen. Okay. So this is out of the box. If you were to start a new Flutter application and hit um, Flutter Create, this is the exact application that you would be gifted with. And the code that we're, we're seeing here is the actual um, complete Flutter application. Um, again, we even the app class extends a widget because in Flutter, everything is a widget. And then uh, we have each, each um, widget has a build function. In this case, we're returning a material app um, and then it has some state with a home page, const my home page. And const uh, or the my home page class is also a widget. In this case, a stateful widget, which is um, different from the stateless widget in that it holds state. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and do the same app on. Let's see if I can grab this one. Uh, this is a native iOS app. Right, so in this case, we are just simply tapping a button. You'll notice that Swift UI, in fact, renders native looking iOS components because they are native iOS components. And if we were to do the same uh, demonstration with um, an Android application, if I can run one, let's see if we can get uh, here on the left side with Jetpack Compose. This is what the same similar application would be with uh, native Android using Jetpack Compose. I will go back over to the Flutter application on the Android device so that you can see a bit of, a bit of difference. Um, but these are the way with the Flutter strategy of drawing directly on the screen have full control over the entire screen real estate to do with what we want. Um, whereas with Android and with iOS, um, we are using what's been given out of the box for view elements. And we don't have the ability to draw directly on the entire canvas unless we drop down into um, some lower level Android and iOS code. I have two links to these two, two projects. Um, with this talk, I was wanting to keep it at an introductory level. I didn't want to go too deep into all of what Flutter can accomplish, but um, again, this is the entire, um, what we're looking at 115 lines of code. Most of it's commented, um, whereas with Xcode, um, we're seeing some of those same view elements, but of course, we're having to use two completely different apps um, we're having to change context between Swift and with Kotlin. Um, we're now dealing with um, the entire Xcode framework and all of Android Studio, uh, where, whereas we can be lightweight with Flutter. And I think the vast majority of apps that are being created probably should be created by, with, some, uh, with some sort of cross-platform framework um, because it's actually not, um, it's, a little, it's a lot of overhead to, have to worry about two completely different applications uh, just to target fairly similar uh, rectangles that are on screens. Any questions?